Smartphone Awards 2017. That video is coming up right now. Let's go. So what is up guys, Nick here helping you to master your technology and welcome to my smartphones award video for 2017. Now on the table here, I don't have every phone of 2017, but I have all the ones that I think were some of the best of the year. Now some exclusions on this list that probably will be featured in here are the 5T, the Razer phone didn't make my list this year, and I think it was an HTC U11 I don't have here on the table. But let's begin with the first topic which is going to be the best overall looking body and design. And that award for me, it was a close call between the iPhone 10 and the Galaxy S8. This is the S8 Plus, but this goes for both S8 and S8 Plus is the S8. Now, the S8 does have one glaring flaw, which is the fingerprint scanner at the top of the back, but at the same time, if it wasn't for that, it would have been a perfect design smartphone, in my opinion, and for that reason, it takes the number one crown for best design of the year for me. Now, the iPhone 10 was a very close second in this regard, so, you know, if you get an iPhone 10, you still have one of the best designs of the year here, but the reason it didn't, it didn't make the first place is because the camera bump, it's just a little bit too thick for me, and the notch at the top is just un-Apple-like in my opinion. So for two glaring flaws and only one for the S8, I had to give the S8 the win there. Now, the next category is going to be the best battery life smartphone of the year, and that crown goes to the iPhone 8 Plus. So the iPhone 8 Plus has been phenomenal with the battery life. I mean, like 2,700 milliamp hour battery or so, that's like 2,691, somewhere around there. But of all the phones I've used this year, we got the Note 8 here on the table, the LG G6, iPhone 8, iPhone 10, Google Pixel 2. We do have the OnePlus 5, the S8 Plus. The iPhone 8 Plus has been the winner here. It just lasts longer than any phone I have used this year when it comes to battery life. It does take longer to charge than a lot of these phones, but it's still the longest road warrior if you're looking for a phone for the best battery life. Get yourself an iPhone 8 Plus. So the best overall display of the year goes to, I think, think you would have guessed it the Samsung Galaxy Note 8 with a clear win here at the best display overall now I know a lot of people are going to argue no that's the iPhone 10 because DxO Mark said that they have the best display this is my predictions here or this is my like subjective opinions here in this video and to me if you were picking a smartphone and you asked me Nick Ackerman the creator of this channel which one to get I would say get the Note 8. It has the punchiest, most vibrant, brightest looking display that just stands out the most of all these smartphones, regardless of the little on paper specs that you hear from some of these websites online. If you want the best display on a smartphone, get yourself the Samsung Galaxy Note 8. But they're all really good displays. It's not like the, the Note 8 is so much better. It's just, you know, just enough better to make it better than every smartphone that came out this year when it comes to the display department. Okay, so the award for the fastest smartphone of the year, the quickest, you can buy that is the google pixel 2 now i know internally the hardware is just much quicker on paper for iphone 8 8 plus and iphone 10 but in real world practice there is no phone that i feel this entire year was quicker in everyday use than the pixel 2 so if you want a lightning fast phone the oneplus series gets close to this but the Pixel 2 is the way to go for just raw speed on a smartphone. Android 8.0 was just very well optimized, even better optimized than iOS 11 when it launched this year. iOS 11 is getting a little bit better, but still Android Oreo right now on the Pixel series is the quickest phone I have used in 2017. Best overall mid-range phone. Now I don't have the 5T here. That is actually the winner, but I'm gonna use the 5, the OnePlus 5 for you know an example here. OnePlus 5T, or the five, these are two of the best mid-range phones of the year, but I would have to give it to OnePlus for this category. They just offer so much at you know a relatively cheap price point in comparison to the rest of the phones that you see on the table. So OnePlus 5T is the winner there for me. I just used the OnePlus 5 for an example. So the next award is the best sleeper phone of the year. What I mean by that is the phone that nobody paid attention to, nobody cared about, but was really a great phone, and that is the LG G6. So the G6, you know, basically, gives you the same 18 by 9 aspect ratio that all of the latest phones give you it's about just as fast yes it has a snapdragon 821 i don't care in real world use it it runs about the same unless you're doing super heavy stuff which i don't think most people are doing on phones you know this phone is on 
on par to me with most of this stuff on the table. Yeah, it doesn't have the best display in comparison to an OLED, but the G6, a lot of people sleeped on it, and it gets an award for being one of the best phones that nobody paid attention to in 2017, aka it's like the underdog of the smartphone world, in my opinion. And you could cop one of these for like 330 bucks or so now, so you can get yourself in the 2017 type smartphone for a lot less money than most of these with a G6. So what is the best smartphone camera of the year? The award for that for me goes to the Google Pixel 2. Now this was a really close call between it and the iPhone 10. Even though the iPhone 10 does offer you the dual camera setup on the rear, the Pixel 2 to me just gave us a much better photo for point and shoot. So an average consumer would buy a Google Pixel 2, they would buy an iPhone 10, and I think most would claim that the Google Pixel did a better job just on a first shot, you know, automatic mode. And you know, most of these are consumer phones here, so that's why I do think the Google Pixel 2 takes the crown for the best camera of the year. The stabilization in video is ridiculous as well. And you know, you could say, well, you don't get that optical zoom. I don't see people using that too much. And and also that telephoto portrait mode, the Google Pixel can do that on both sides with one lens in AI. So to me, the camera of the year goes to the Pixel 2 and Pixel 2 XL. A very close second in that regard, again, is the iPhone 10 and the 8 Plus. So this was a hard one, but what is the most innovative smartphone of the year? The smartphone award for most innovative smartphone, it was close between the G6 and the iPhone 10, but it's gonna be the iPhone 10 for the facial recognition technology. Now, the reason I even mentioned the G6, I know a lot of people are gonna be like, what do you mean G6? I don't like that phone. The G6 was one of the first phones of the year with this kind of design with the 18 by nine aspect ratio. You could basically say they pioneered this design. They weren't the first, but they were one of the first to you know consumerize or make it mainstream was the LG G6 and then followed after was the Galaxy S8, the iPhone 10, and other all screen design phones. But the iPhone 10 takes the award for the best innovative phone of the year due to mainly face ID. That scanning recognition is on another level in comparison to these other ones. Now, I do have an award for the best phone of the year when it comes to just a phone I think generally everyone would be happy with if they were just to buy it and didn't care about, you know, all these extra features that you're being marketed to. That is the iPhone 8. The iPhone 8 is a classic looking iPhone. It's good in the hand in terms of the size. You know, it, it feels premium. It's fast got a great camera 4k 60 it is a beast of a little smartphone it doesn't cost you a thousand bucks so i give the award for best general smartphone of the year to the iphone 8 now the final one which is the best smartphone of the year again this video is subjective these are my awards your awards might differ my favorite smartphone the best smartphone of the year in my opinion gets the award is the samsung galaxy note 8 let me explain why now all of these phones on the table right here are upwards of 500 dollars for the most part most of them are actually closer to a thousand and the note 8 on that category to me gives you more than any of these you do have the largest display on most of these phones. You also do have the brightest display, in my opinion, than most of these phones. You have the best looking display than most of these phones, which you can tweak. Also, you get phenomenal performance. You do get the S Pen. So the S Pen does give you, you know, great software. That's kind of like another software on top of Android with this S Pen software. You do get a dual camera setup here for the Note 8 first for a Samsung phone, fast charging, wireless charging, water resistance. It is the full package here. One thing that's not the greatest is its speaker. That is one of the only flaws to me of the Note 8. Maybe you could question that fingerprint on the back, but as an overall package, I think you get so much with the Note 8. It's an extremely smart smartphone, and you could just make this basically your pocket computer, whereas a lot of these still feel kind of like just smartphones in your pocket. This one feels like you're taking your desktop down to a phone. So that's why the Note 8 wins the best smartphone of the year award for me. The close second runner-ups were the iPhone 10 and then the Google Pixel 2 XL. I actually got the small one, but I would say the 2 XL would be like the third in line. So anyway, that's it. The best smartphones of 2017 for me. These are my awards. Let me know what you think down below in the comment section of this video. Give me your top five. Let me know your top five in order. Write them down and we will all talk about this. And uh, anyway, I got a giveaway coming soon, so you might want to be subscribed for that. And uh, Nick here up and you to master your technology. Be sure to be well. I will catch you all in the next episode and peace.